Hey, man. I'm just happy to be here. Really, I am. I get it. You could say this is the, oh, Lego's just going out there and reading stats kind of video. Oh, he's not really talking about it. He's just looking at numbers, and yeah. Okay, cool. You got me. My hands are up. I'm caught. That is all I'm doing in this video, but, you know, the thing is, I love the Vancouver Canucks. They are my favorite team, and they have been so for a very long time. So, when it comes to the way this season has gone, sure, you could talk about the ups and downs. Sure, you could talk about the sort of negative stories in the media. I know people are talking about OEL right now, and there's a conversation about a buyout, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I wanted to talk instead about the best story in Vancouver that has been the best story for so long that I think at this point, it's been, what, 70 games already? So... We're kind of used to seeing this and how it's been popping up every time the guy gets a multi-point game, a five-point game, whatever it is. But today I wanted to talk about the Vancouver Canucks top point producer, EP40. Elias Pettersson, ladies and gentlemen, because when it comes to the way PD season has gone, I feel like he's the only real absolute shining star of a bright spot that the Canucks had on this terrible turned okay, turned somewhat hopeful season they've played. And I know you could say, oh, Quinn Hughes, probably in that mix as well. The guy's one of the top point scorers for all defensemen. He became the fastest NHL defenseman ever to 200 career assists, which still kind of blows my mind how Quinn Hughes was able to do that. But realistically, when you talk about points, you talk about the just quantity of everything coming around. EP40 is the guy, in my opinion, that's been the MVP, and it's not even really close. Elias Pettersson this season, if you take a look at his point production, is at a pretty good number. 71 games played. 93 points, 35 goals, 55 assists. He goes out there and pretty much gets involved on... What are the Canucks numbers right now? Let's look at that. NHL standings. We'll look at this on the Google machine and see the entire games played metric here for Vancouver. Vancouver currently has a total of 250 goals for. So, PD, 93 total points divided by 250. He's got an involvement percentage of 37%, meaning that on 37% of Vancouver goals, Elias Pettersson has a point on that amount of them. Now, any involvement percentage above, like, 25% is already considered to being nutty and good. So, PD being at 37 is kind of mind-blowing. Honestly, it is. And when you think about just how strong he's been able to play with the puck this season, it doesn't surprise you when you acknowledge that he has been involved in that amount of Canucks goals. So, Pedersen this year has taken a complete step up. He has been controlling the puck in ways that he hasn't before. He's been more confident. He hasn't been knocked around as much as he was in his rookie season. You remember all the memes earlier on when he was a rookie. Oh, he gets knocked off the puck easily. He's not too strong. He's not built. Anytime he goes into the corners, he always falls down. Well, Elias Pettersson is a gamer. He's competitive, and he hears all this criticism, and he always wants to go out there and prove people wrong. So, this season has really been the year where PD has shown off that, yeah, even though he is still a pretty, let's just say not the bulkiest guy in the world, he's only 176 pounds listed on Elite Prospects, but when it comes to his adaptability, his ability to learn as well, PD this season has shown off that he has what it takes to go out there and incorporate any sort of element into his game, because no longer does he really get knocked off the puck. He goes out there and is able to control in the corners, he's able to reverse hit people sometimes, and he gets a little feisty now. Compared to what he did in his rookie season, he's going after people sometimes with hits once in a while. He's not afraid to let that physicality shine and combine this with his offensive playmaking, which has taken a big step up, with his sniping ability, which seems to be better than ever. He is now firing one-timers from the blue line. He is now scoring long shot goals. He can still walk in and snipe at short side when the goalie gives him that space. Elias Pettersson has just been so dynamic this season that... I mean, the 93 points that he has is pretty indicative of all of these traits combined. 
He is at a career high in goals, 35 by the way. He's doing that same thing that Andre Kuzmenko is doing, becoming one of the first Vancouver Canucks players to score 35 goals in a season in a decade when Daniel Sedin and Ryan Kessler did it back in 2010-2011. And he's also got a career high in assists, making the career high in points all the more impressive. He also has nine games left on the regular season. And with seven points to go to 100, EP40 is looking to become the first Vancouver Canucks player to get the mark. Of course, knock on wood, anything happens to him since Daniel Sedin in 2010-2011. And this is also why I wanted to make this video too, because just the thumbnail opportunity of putting Petey beside the Sedins and having all three of their heads kind of be looking the same in the way that they are, you know, it's kind of weird that I'm saying it like that, but yeah, no, Petey looks a lot like a Sedin based off of the way his headshot was from this season, but either way, Daniel Sedin is the last Vancouver Canucks player to have 100 points in a season. JT Miller was close. Last year, he had an overtime chance against the Oilers in the final game of the season that would have put him at 100 had he buried it, but no, he didn't. That game went to a shootout, I believe, but 99 points? Nah, fam. Petey's on pace for 100. In fact, he's on pace for 104. Now, that is an interesting number because that's the amount of points that Daniel Sedin had in 2010-2011 to win the Art Ross Trophy in that time frame. He had 104, and that was number one in the NHL. You can see that he was the only player, I believe, that season to get the mark. Let's just go ahead and pull out the numbers here. Yeah, Daniel Sedin, only player to get 100 points. Marty St. Louis was second with 99 that year, and then you had Corey Perry who had 98. Henrik Sedin also had 94 points that season, so Petey's already kind of in that territory. Also with Elias Pettersson, you had Henrik Sedin in 29, or not 29, 2009-2010, excuse me, having the highest Canucks point scoring season ever. He had 112 points, which was the Art Ross winner that season as well. So back-to-back 100-point -back seasons for both Sedins, or just one Sedin each, I guess you could say, and back-to-back -back Art Ross trophies, too. In 2009-2010, there were four guys who got 100 points. Nick Backstrom as a center, Ovechkin, Crosby, and then Henrik Sedin. Daniel Sedin also had the same points per game as Henrik, pretty much, but he only played 68 games that season, so... If both Sedins were healthy, then Henrik Sedin probably would have had a few more points, but then again, because Daniel was out for an extended amount of time that season, Henrik kind of evolved into a goal scorer, hence the 29 goals he was able to get. Even though he was a playmaker, he still had that goal scoring in him, but... Either way, Elias Pettersson is set to becoming the first Canucks player since these two to get that 100 points. Of course, knock on wood, everything goes smoothly from here on out. And that's kind of why this video is being made, because he looks like the Sedins, he's playing with the point production of the Prime Sedins, and he has been dominant at every level this season that, you know, there really is just no limit for him. Even his defensive game has come into its own this season. He's a penalty-killing guy, he's scoring points on the PK, him and Miller have been so good at setting up those shorthanded opportunities. I think the Canucks lead the league still in shorthanded goals, and Miller and Petey are one and two in shorthanded points this season. Like, it's kind of wild just how crazy good this season has been. And for all the Canucks smack that gets thrown around, okay, the team refuses to rebuild, they don't want to go out there and sell, you can understand from their perspective why they don't want to do that when they have a talent like Elias Pettersson on the roster right now. Plain and simple. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Elias Pettersson, the way he has been playing so far, and what you're expecting to see out of this team as they play against the St. Louis Blues later today. I will most likely be able to watch the game. I'm not really too sure. I'm not too booked up today, and hopefully we'll have the opportunity to make a post-game video regardless of what happens. The Canucks are 10-2-0 in their last 12, so they've been winning a lot. A lot of that does have to do with Petey and his point production, but for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the way he has played and the Canucks so far. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.